guest. Um, some, some of you may have been with her. She's absolutely, it's some of her seminars, absolutely delightful. She is, um, of course, available to our teens who are here in Research Park. So if you are interested in getting to know her a little bit better, but she provides a wide array of services related to teams, people, um, you know, HR is such a broad term, but she can help narrow that down for you. So if you are a company in the research park and looking for some help with that, please check out what Kelly has to offer on our website. But without further ado, and I know you said you came, you're driving, what, four hours? Two hours each way. Yeah. So Kelly comes to us from the Springfield area. She actually was a great referral from our friends at the University of Illinois Springfield, and we're really happy to have her as part of our team. And I'm going to turn over my time to her. So okay. thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks for that introduction. It's always good to be back here. I love coming over to visit my friends in Champaign. Although I was a University of Minnesota girl myself, but um, all good. Um, well, thank you so much for having me. Uh, we're going to talk about time management. Um, my experience in this comes from a number of organizations that I've worked with here um, uh, in Illinois, H.G. Smith and Hanson. Uh, as well as uh, large companies on both coasts. When I was with Starbucks Hotels, they're not all owned by Marriott, sadly, but um, we had, gosh, 150,000 employees, and it was a 24-7 type of operation um, in those big local companies. So you just kind of learn over time. You know, I'm sure you've all felt some days that you leave work and you go, I stayed too late, I gave too much, it's not paying back. Um, and I'm sure you've had to make those compromises sometimes between work and family and school and all these different hats that we wear. I know many of you talked about that too. So that's a little bit about me. Um, <clears throat> how many of you are managers that you manage other people? You're the supervisor uh, of one or more multiple employees. Okay. Um, so we'll kind of balance a little bit. Some of the content in here is kind of manager specific. Some of it is going to, you know, it's all going to benefit everybody. Some of it is kind of manager specific. Um, when I talk to managers, I say, you know, hey, if you're an individual contributor and you need to improve your work output in any given week by 10%, what can you do? What are some things you can do? 10% more output in your week. What are you going to do? Twice as long. You're going to work longer. <laughs> well, hopefully not. So that would be 100%. Um, <laughs> yeah. So just identify the time makers or like processes that you don't need to do and uh -huh. remove those processes. Okay. Perfect. Well, she's not going to stay late. She's going to take some stuff off her plate. Smart woman. Um, yeah. You could you could stay late. You could work longer. You could cross some things off the list to try to be more efficient. All those kinds of things. But if you're a manager of others or a business owner and you need to increase your team's output by 10%, you can't absorb all that yourself. Uh, somebody used the word delegate uh, earlier, um, involving other people, leaning on other people. You have to develop some new strategies and you have to be real efficient yourself. Um, when I'm working with CEOs of these large companies, they're not doing the work of 150,000 employees uh, or even 50 employees. You have to learn some of these skills to get the things off your plate, stay focused on the things that are going to add the most value to your work, to your life, etc. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about a lot of that. Um, when I talk to entrepreneurs especially, um, and I'm, as Laura mentioned, I'm uh, uh, an expert advisor, I don't have time to title give me, but um, <laughs> with the Innovate Springfield as well. So I spend a lot of time with entrepreneurs and startups. Um, I love this quote from the book Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey, which if you read it, listen to it on the audiobook, it's worth it. Um, but I love this quote. Um, Create structure so you can have freedom. Map your direction so you can swerve in the lanes. Choreograph, then dance. Creativity needs borders. Without them, there is only chaos. I took out a couple words there for efficiency. Um, but, you know, Entrepreneurs are innovative and scrappy and unstructured by nature, but as you learn to, as you want to grow and you need to create some tools and processes, you have to create some kind of guidelines and boundaries, or you're just sort of, you know, you're in an inner sort of floating down the river just kind of seeing where it takes you otherwise. And that's, off, sometimes that's enjoyable, um, but usually not a real great feeling, and it's not always uh, leading you to the correct destination. So a little bit of structure, a little bit of guardrails are going to help you feel like you're focusing your time on the right things and you're able to get some things off your plate. Um, <clears throat> what other, I know, I'm, actually I'm not going to spend too much time on this because you all kind of mentioned it, but we have many other uses of our time <laughs> besides work. Uh, we have families, we have friends and significant others, we might have pets, uh, we might have a fitness routine. We, like to stick to or would aspire to start up at some point in life. 
Um, we have hobbies. We might want to cook dinner. We might want to take a vacation. Wouldn't we like to take a vacation? Who would like to take a vacation? Um, <laughs> now, if I said, hey, drop everything, we need to leave on vacation tomorrow, uh, show of hands again, if you could actually be able to do that. Of course not. If you were to plan a vacation, how far out in advance are you planning that vacation? Somebody just shout out a number. Several months. Several months. I heard a year. What else? Not knowing you're real spontaneous. I'll go tomorrow if you want to go. I'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> but you know, you have to plan ahead to be able to fit some of these things in your night or in your life. Um, date night, right? You've got to plan that ahead. Sometimes you can find an, a window of opportunity, uh, but usually you're trying to start to think ahead. Uh, kids activities, spring break activities, things like that. Uh, you have to plan ahead because we do have all these other hats that we want to wear. If you forego date night once or twice or five or ten or a hundred times or you never plan one, what starts to happen in that relationship, right? Um, that person learns that they're not a valuable use of your time and they start to respond accordingly. Um, so we have to give our time to the right people that matter to us and make our life real. Uh, so we're going to talk about a couple different topics, um, planning to win and investing wisely the time that you do have. Uh, we'll talk about the dreaded, oh, dreaded email. God, oh, it's the worst. We'll talk about email. Um, we'll talk a little bit about apps, yourself, managing people who interrupt you and try to steal your time. Time robbers will come and try to get you. Um, we'll talk about how to fend those off. All right. Um, I'm going to read you a little story. You may have heard this story. It's about a professor, but I found it on Facebook, so I can't even give credit to the credit it's due. But I'm going to read you a little story. <coughs> I won't sing it. Um, <laughs> A professor stood before his class and had some items in front of him. I need to visualize here. Um, when the class began, he wordlessly picked up a very large and empty glass jar and filled it with rocks. He asked the students if the jar was full. They agreed that it was. The professor then picked up a bag of pebbles and poured them into the jar. He shook the jar lightly, and the pebbles, of course, rolled into the open space between the rocks. He then asked the students again if the jar was full. They agreed that it was. The professor picked up a box of sand and then poured it into the jar. And of course, the sand filled up everything else. He asked the students once more if the jar was full, and the students responded with a unanimous, yeah. yes, God, stop pouring things in the jar. Um, the professor then produced a bottle of beer, which I, I have a Diet Coke and a water bottle here, but um, we'll pretend. It produced a bottle of beer from under the table and proceeded to pour the entire contents into the jar, effectively filling up all of the space with between the grains of sand. The students laughed. <laughs> All right, a little acting. Now, said the professor, as the laughter subsided, I want you to recognize that this jar represents your life. The large rocks are the important things. Your family, your partner, your health, your children, uh, your education, uh, your friends, your favorite passions. Things that if everything else in your life was lost and only they remained, your life would still be very full. The pebbles are the other things that matter, like your job, your house, your car, and the sand is everything else, the small stuff. If you put the sand in the jar first, there's no room for the pebbles or the big rocks. And the same goes for your life. If you spend your time and energy on the small stuff, you'll never have time for the things that are truly important to you. Pay attention to the things that are critical to your success and to your happiness. Play with your children. Take time to get medical checkups. Take your partner out dancing. Play another round of 18. The work will never be done. There is always more waiting for you. So throw the dinner party, go on vacation, and take care of your health. Take care of the big rocks first, the things that really matter. Set your priorities. The rest is just sand. One of the students raised their hand and inquired, well, what does the beer represent? And the professor said, I'm glad you asked. It just goes to show that no matter how full your life may seem, there's always room for a beer with a friend. <laughs> I like that story. I tell it every time I teach time management. I think I found it as some kind of Facebook meme about 10 years ago, but uh, it stuck with me, so I wish I could give credit uh, to where it's due. All right, um, so on your tables, uh, there is a, a piece of paper here. I want you to kind of start thinking. Uh, there's a, it's got a box kind of matrix on it. If you didn't grab one, raise your hand. I'll bring one. If you're sitting on the fringes, you did get one. Um, what are your big blocks? What are those things that are truly critical to your life, your success, your ultimate happiness? Uh, what are your pebbles and what sand gets in the way? Now those three questions are not actually on your sheet, 
we're going to talk to them in terms of the priority matrix. This is an adaptation of the Stephen Covey, uh, Seven Great Habits of Successful People, is time management matrix. When I worked at Hot Topic, believe it or not, you would not uh, imagine, one, that I worked at Hot Topic. I didn't look like this exactly. I'm just streaking my hair and dressed much different. Um, <laughs> couldn't wear a blazer there. But um, I did work at the headquarters of Hot Topic for a few years, and they were adamant about training all supervisors and managers in time management. We all had to go through training uh, on that topic. Um, so on the matrix, is, you'll see something more like this on the matrix on your sheet. Um, the top right quadrant there, high importance, low urgency. Those are things that are important. They're essential to your success, to your happiness, uh, to your results, to your outcomes. But they're not on fire today, right? Uh, things like training, right? You're all here today, you made time for it. But uh, compliance tasks within a company sometimes fall in this area. Um, ongoing training, process improvement, uh, long-term business development, long-term relationships that we think sometimes we can steal some time from. Those things belong uh, in that box. Take a second and write what your big rocks would be. What are those things that are very important? Maybe they're not on fire today. must make time for, uh, and they are on fire today. High urgency, they need to get done. Real deadlines, client emergencies, work emergencies, unexpected things that pop up, uh, crying babies, you know, stuff like that. It's important and it's urgent. Your kids play, your kids sports events, they have to get done at a specific place and time, you gotta make time for it, uh, and it's important. These might be the pebbles, if you will. And then let's go down one box, the one uh, called distractions, low importance and high urgency. So things that distract you. They seem like they're on fire. It might be uh, a telemarketer calling you, spam phone calls. Your phone's ringing, it distracts you, oh my gosh, it's urgent. Uh, but then you answer and realize it's very low importance. Junk email, things are cc on. Oh, the worst. And then bottom right, low importance, low urgency. Time wasters, trivia, busy work, social media, all belongs in this bucket. We're just wasting our time. You see the little Facebook or you know, Instagram notifications and you through LinkedIn, whatever your platform is, you think, ah, oh, so many notifications, that doesn't matter. <coughs> Okay. So as you're going through this, um, we'll go back up to the top right, quality time, big rocks. I want you to write plan in or near that box in big capital letters. You have to plan for everything in that bucket. You might not be able to take a vacation today, but if you plan ahead, you can take one next month or in three months. You might not be able to have a date night tonight, but if you plan ahead, I bet you you get something on the calendar next week, maybe next two weeks. You have to plan ahead. Like compliance training, a thing you've been procrastinating. Can't do it today, but you can do it maybe next month. Uh, in the uh, top left, fight over oh, is kind of fighting fires there. Right, big capital letters, manage. If you have two hours of work-related, unanticipated emergencies every day in your work, then you should allocate two hours on average to deal with that. Save two hours a day, don't overcommit. Know that those things are going to pop up and leave some time on your calendar. Uh, bottom left, you want to try to say, uh, don't resist distractions, right, reduce. So you want to try to, try to minimize those things if you can. And then bottom right, eliminate. Get rid of those time wasters. 
as much as you can, try to get those items off your plate. Stop doing them. Delegate. Train someone else to do it. Things like that. Okay. Do we feel a little refreshed already? We have mm -hmm. some categorization of things. We're thinking ahead a little bit. Okay. Any questions about that? Again, if you like this kind of thinking, go check out literally almost any book by Stephen Covey. Uh, we'll help you kind of think through that. If you've never done any Covey training before, uh, he, he wrote the book on it, literally. We used to have a planner. Does anybody have a day planner still? Like, uh, that was a thing. All right. So uh, rule number one, we talk about time management. There's no such thing. You cannot manage time. No matter what you do, that clock is going to keep ticking every second and every minute of every day. You cannot stop it. The sun always rises, right? Uh, so you can't do anything about that. You can only manage yourself. So let's do that. Um, in order to do that, you need to come up with a plan. Hint, the plan is at the bottom of your worksheet. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about that. Um, question for you. When you grab your phone in the morning, mine's right by my bed. It's such a bad habit. I grab it and look at it. Uh, or you come to work, you sit down at your computer. What's the first thing you're looking at? Work email. The dread I'll sing. There's some singing for you. Dreaded work email. It's terrible. We all do it. And then what happens when you look at that work email at 5:45 in the morning? Do you respond to any? No, I don't. Oh yeah. It's just like stress level, stress level, stress level, distraction, hijack, mental craziness, stuff. Yeah, you get hijacked, and you're, it's almost ineffective because you're just going to go back and read it later, right? So that goes in the category of eliminate. Stop doing that. Don't look at your email if you don't have time to respond. Just don't do it. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, we, it's very uh, very guilty, many of us. What's the other thing we tend to look at? Social media. Social media. Yeah, enough. Yeah, stop. we got to stop. It's an addiction to sickness. Um, so try to stop that as well. And you know, every once in a while you want to check on what your friends are doing, I get it. But um, <laughs> um, definitely stop looking at your email first thing in the, in the day or any time you really don't have time to devote some mental energy to responding. If it's that big of an emergency, they'll call you and it will show up in high importance, high urgency. And if people are emailing you things that are true emergencies, when we get to manage people, I'd be telling that person, stop emailing me. You're just throwing it into my backyard. It's not fair. Call me if it's that important. Or text to me. I'll see it right away. Okay. Um, so calendar first. Uh, uh, okay. Um, calendar first, best way to start the day. Um, get used to the habit of looking at your calendar first. In, in Office 365, or you know, some of the online web-based platforms is easier. If you're using a desktop-based version of any kind of email or uh, email management software, you can actually change it so that when you open it, it shows you your calendar. Uh -huh. So get in that habit first. Now, me on my phone, when I pick it up, I just have to remember to click the one with the number on it instead of the one with the envelope on it, right? So get in that habit. Um, and then the next thing I'll mention here, just under planning, is you have to make time for time management. Planning ahead takes time. Managing priorities takes time. So you have to spend a little bit of time in your thinking chair uh, to say, what do I need to be doing, right? So a couple of other good habits. If you want to pick up your phone first thing in the morning, spend five or 10 minutes going, what do I have to get done today and tomorrow? Go in and make sure all those things are on your calendar. If it's on a to-do list or a post-it note or you wrote it on the back of your hand um, or you have a text message to yourself or a voice memo, spend time and get all those things on your calendar for the next available opportunity. So spend that time each morning. Uh, it could be at the end of day. Some people are not morning people, they're uh, second wind afternoon people. So 4.50 before you go home at 5 o'clock, uh, spend your daily planning and plan ahead for uh, the next day and the day after. You're going to feel like you have such a better handle on your priorities, what has to get done. Then once a week, either on Monday morning or Friday afternoon, I would suggest, make it your own. Uh, what do I have to do this week and next? Look a little further out. Just once a week, 10 minutes. What do I have to get done this week and next? Do I have kid activities coming up? Who's driving? Can I get a workout in? Can I sneak to the gym? When can I do that? Put it on your calendar. Um, again, some people are Monday morning people. They come in all bright eyed, bushy tail, on Monday morning with big coffee, and they want to sit down and do their time management. Cool. Me, I like to not finish my week until I've looked at next week and the week ahead. So I'm more of a Friday afternoon kind of time management person. 
Um, that way I know I'm going to enjoy my weekend, stress-free for the most part, <laughs> and uh, I know I've got a good plan for next week and the week ahead. Uh, and then, um, again, and, and put these things on your calendar. Put, put a line item on your calendar that says weekly planning, block 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and just set it as a recurring meeting. It'll be there all the time, and when someone is looking at your calendar availability and trying to set a meeting with you, they'll be like, oh, she's busy at that time. I'll pick another time, right? So you're already using your calendar as your alibi for why you can't be somewhere and do something. That time's allocated. So put these recurring meetings on your calendar. Um, monthly, quarterly, same thing. What if you're a monthly person or if you're a quarterly person, pick one or do both. But this month, next month. This quarter, next quarter. For, um, and I will tell you, uh, not to the risk of sounding overly engineered, uh, my husband and I will sit down once a quarter. We say, do we have any trips planned? Do we have stop? My kid plays competitive soccer. Our kids play competitive soccer. Do we have trips we need to plan? Have we booked the room? Have we done this? What do we need to do? So we'll, we'll look this month, next month, this quarter, next quarter. We're trying to plan a big vacation. We do it uh, in that type of a conversation where we have going on. So we get those things on the calendar. Um, this is also where you're looking at things like your, uh, in your business, compliance items training to seminars that you mean to sign up for, but you never have time. Put them out two months. We'll sign up for it. Um, committee memberships, sales activities, things like that. Book time for travel. If you have to drive a meeting across town, it's going to take half an hour if you're on your calendar. Uh, and then once a year as well, again, uh, in a business, we know that we have to plan our budgets and things for the next year. That should also be your time to sit and look at what big things do I have going on next year. Do I want to pursue that master's degree? Could I make time for that? Does my kid need to start thinking about colleges? I need to make time for that. Put those things on your calendar, and if you make these all recurring meetings, they'll pop up as your reminder. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. This is usually the part where people start to look at me like, is she serious? Yeah, totally serious. Yeah. <laughs> Try it. It works. You might not stick to it, going back to that Matthew McConaughey quote. You might not stick to this every time. You might get busy on a Friday afternoon when you had your weekly planning schedule and want to dish out early. Go ahead. But you can do that now with confidence, knowing that you've got at least 80% of what you need to get done on your calendar. Spend that time and plan. You can, you can slack off with confidence <laughs> when you have a better plan. I just did that last Friday. I was like, yeah, I can do that Monday. We're good. Because I have a plan, and I know for sure that I'm not guessing at that, and it's going to bite me later. I can say that with confidence. Yeah. Any questions about this? Seems so easy, but it's hard, and it's the sticking to it that's hard. So when I'm when I'm good and I have my act together, uh, when professional Kelly is in the house, um, I can stick to this plan. When overloaded, uh, my my other friend overloaded crazy Kelly shows up. All of a sudden, I got post-its and handwritten notes sitting around, and I'm making a to-do list. I'm like, oh, get back on get back on track, right? I need to get things back on track. Um, it's not going to be perfect every time, but try it, and you'll start to build some good habits. Okay. Um, be curious if any of you were willing to do so to hold up your calendar on your phone. I would like to see some really colorful calendars. But if anyone has a completely blank one, I'd like to see that too. Anybody have a got some you got some appointments on there? Okay. Oh many appointments, yes, okay. Anybody have a no, there's nothing on there. Okay, there we go. Yep, it's okay. You're among friends. I get it. This is my first one. Oh, okay, okay. Got some on your appointments, okay, good. Some, some appointments, okay, a couple. Not as many as I'd like to see, but it's a good start. <laughs> Ooh, she's got a, a full and color coded. Nice. Yeah, it's kind of color code based on my kids' uh, yeah. activities and my activities. Same, yeah. yeah, yeah. My work ones are like red and my family ones are yellow. Um, I should, I don't start writing my kid, but I probably should. But. Okay, good, 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 good. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've sat in a room full of like, fully employed managers at companies like that. I got nothing on here. How do you live? <laughs> All right. Um, so using your calendar, you got to put that calendar to work. This is an actual screenshot of my calendar. Uh, there's, there's today. So there's today. There's my two hours of driving on Tuesday the 18th. I did get up and work out this morning because it was on the calendar. I got my alarm went off. I got to go and work out. Um, so put those things on your calendar. This is all just kind of work stuff. I am aspiring to golf on Friday afternoon. My husband and I have been talking about it for two weeks. So it's on my calendar. We'll see what happens. Um, so, you, you know, reach for your goals. Um, but put all those things on your calendar. I've got drive time. I've got personal things. I've got 
work things, you know, all the, all the things that need to get done. Prep time, um, all of that. So anything that has to get done, if it's on your to-do list and it deserves your time, put it on your calendar. There's so many um, apps and tools and tips and tricks and devices. This is the best one. Put it on your calendar. Set reminders, use recurring meetings. Uh, will help you just feel like you have a better handle on what you need to do, how much time it's going to take. Uh, and then when people say, hey, when can you, do you think we could, da, 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 and you go, yeah, it's their house Thursday afternoon. Does that work for you? 99 times out of 100, they're going to say, yeah, that's fine. I can wait till Thursday. Perfect. Put it on your calendar. Um, but it just gives you a, the ability to say yes or no with confidence. I could very easily say, nope, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, I have no time to do any of that. I wish I could, I just can't. How about Thursday? So it allows you to negotiate, again, with more confidence. Allows you to be spontaneous with more confidence. So, yeah. I'll just share some things so that they learn from others. Yeah, there's times when um, it's more on the personal side and we just kind of get busy, so like, I will block out. Like, if I was you, maybe, maybe I'd block out that Thursday time. Like, don't schedule. Yeah. You're know, really busy tomorrow. Yeah. And those morning things are really yeah. taxing or whatever. Yep. Yeah. We don't always follow, we don't use all the time. Yeah. I try to do that occasionally where yeah. like, wow, this is our only night free for like yeah. two weeks. Yeah. Let's not do anything. Let's hold it. Yeah, yeah. let's just sit on the couch and drink wine. Yeah. That would be lovely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Time blocking. You have to relaxation, sleep, fitness, a quality meal, these are not, um, these are things you're entitled to just by being human, right? Don't feel bad about using your time for personal reasons. Even if it is rest and relaxation, you're entitled to that. Your human body requires that you're gonna sleep a certain amount of time, and I'm sure some of you would agree you're not getting enough of it. So putting those times just to not be doing anything else is a perfect use of time. Put that on your calendar when you need it. Um, perfect, other questions, tips and tricks? Yeah. Something I learned some years ago is rather than having an open calendar and let people put meetings where they want to, yeah. I would block times out yeah. so if somebody's looking at my calendar, they'd see I was busy. Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah. Or I just insist I want this meeting before 10 a.m. Because yeah. this meeting at 11 o'clock just yeah. blows my morning or 2.30 in the yeah. afternoon. And I don't do that anymore. Yeah. I, just, I can meet you at 4.30. Okay. I can meet you at 8 in the morning. Yeah. If that's too early, get up earlier. Absolutely. You know, yeah. Right. right. I'm, up, yeah. I'm up at 5.30, yeah. bro, if you want to meet. Because those, those interrupted blocks of time are yeah. just real killer. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, people will snag up your time, especially in a, a shared calendar kind of work environment. People can see availability. They'll go snap it up if you don't snap it up for yourself and your priorities and your goals and your kids and your family first. So block it. Put it on your calendar. Um, the scheduling apps. So we'll get to apps here in a minute. But bookings. Calendly, whatever kind of scheduling app you use, can help you to set windows where you're open for meetings. Maybe you never like to meet at 8 a.m. Maybe you only like to meet at 8 a.m. Put that in your booking. And the other thing is I've learned to use Siri now, because I, I think yeah. of stuff, I'm driving, and I can't yeah. stop to do it. Yeah. And Siri, you know, just put an appointment on, 9 o'clock tomorrow, yeah. take the car for service. Yeah. 9 o'clock, you know, and boom, it's right there, because yeah. I, I forget. But yeah. I mean, when I thought of it, when I parked the car an hour later, yeah. it's gone. Yeah, so I'm absolutely. I'm doing that religiously. Now. Put it on your calendar. And then when I'm scrolling into next week or the week after, I can see the things that I've already booked. Uh, I can, you know, I can kind of plan ahead. As, as when I get to Friday afternoon here, uh, before I, in between coffee with this business prospect I'm having and a volunteer thing I have to do Friday morning and hoping to slack out Friday afternoon, I'll do my weekly planning. Good stuff. So definitely make your calendar work for you. There's so many reasons. When people see your calendars blocked, they'll just look for the next available time. They're not going to try to pressure you into having a meeting sooner. Unless it maybe is really high importance, high urgency. And then you can say, oh, well, maybe I can take the car in the next day. And you can negotiate with confidence. Um, block time for checking email. Do not leave your email open 24-7. And especially don't let it ding or make a noise or pop up every time you get an email. Turn all that off. Um, and just save time, twice a day maybe, for checking email, maybe three times. Um, block time for travel, block time for notes, write-ups, documentation, personal, family things. Um, and then, you know, again, you have the ability to expect the unexpected and negotiate with confidence when those high importance, high urgency things come up that you do have to manage. Okay. Um, so spend a couple minutes in your thinking chair. You might have to turn your paper over and make some notes. What adjustments do you need to make either to start your day, use your calendar more effectively? What events are you going to promise to go add to your calendar? Take a couple minutes. Yeah. I was going to say, I noticed in the last couple of 
couple years, especially since I've had an office emergency, that the party emails all the time. So my yeah. is always open. Yeah. And I also not just myself, but my colleagues are always replying. So yeah. it's almost like a snowball. Yeah. So very few times do I see no one not responding within uh, 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I feel that anxiety of yeah. like, oh man, I'm already like, if I just, to your point, right? Yeah. I just block. Because I try to do that where uh -huh. I'm like, I shut it off. I'm only going to look at my email like yeah. three or four times a day. Yeah. But then I realize I'm so behind mm -hmm. because everyone is responding so quickly. So I don't know if it's just a yeah. function of being more virtual or, if, yeah. you know. Probably. Yeah, I think that's probably the case. People feel kind of more married to their email than they used to be. I would probably, if you have the opportunity to do so, bring that up at a staff meeting. Um, you know, there's no worse feeling than finding out you're like 75 deep in a reply all thread and you're like, Ugh. just just honestly just delete it. Um, so more than I'll call you. Um, <laughs> uh, I say that kind of half jokingly, but I would bring it up in a staff meeting and say, hey, I'm feeling kind of unproductive because we're just, uh, you know, we'll get to managing people here in a minute, but I'm feeling very unproductive by this constant, I feel like I'm married to my email. Are you guys feeling that way? Could we maybe handle this differently? Could we maybe agree to put these things on a list and bring them up at a weekly team meeting or a morning huddle and not bother each other constantly? And I use a different word. But I would bring it up there and just say, hey, are you guys feeling this way? Because I'm, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed by the email and I'm not able to get things done. Are you feeling that way? They probably are. So, oh my gosh, she's always on her email. Yeah. The other tool that I started using some years ago is a, a dedicated, like Slack or yeah. I hate to say, I don't like Teams very much, but that lets you take yeah. your um, important work stuff yeah. and bring it into a closed group. Yeah. So you're not having to wade through all these other yeah. emails that uh -huh. invariably show up. Yeah. And you can IM, you can do other things yeah. where you're literally like sitting with people yeah. and you won't miss anything. Yeah, that's, that's a terrific tool. Yeah, emails it's got video conferencing, totally. you can do everything yeah. within yeah. you know your phone, your laptop, whatever. Yeah. If, it's been a lifesaver. And if your team needs real-time collaboration, yeah. I might bring, you know, again, in your meeting, I might bring that up and say, hey, if, yeah. if we need more real-time collaboration, for me, email is not the way to do yeah. it. Would you guys be open to trying something different, like Slack yeah. or Teams? If you have Office 365, you got Teams. You yeah, know, it's, it's yeah, totally. yeah, so try some different options. Maybe what you need is a, a different approach. So, okay. All right, so again, just to kind of wrap it up, if it deserves your time, it belongs in your calendar. And I, again, I always get a manager who will say, well, what about my to-do list? <laughs> okay, um, so what do we do with to-do lists? We cross off the things that are easy, that we either are high importance to us or they're really on fire, we get those done. Uh, and then we rewrite the bottom third of that to-do list over and over because it never gets done. And now we're just wasting more time rewriting our to-do list. Put it on your calendar and get it done. Don't lie to yourself to not do, right? <laughs> so I called your to not do list. Put it on your calendar, get it done. Okay, even if it's next month, even if it's next summer, just Put it on your calendar, commit to yourself to get it done. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about email because it's evil. Um, I wish I had a magic wand, this is probably overstating what I'm gonna be able to deliver here, it's not really magic. Um, so a couple things I really like uh, that I'm a fan of in email is when you get those threads that won't stop, the dreaded reply all, uh, I would suggest, hey, can we just hold a quick 15 minute meeting on this tomorrow and stop the email insanity? That might be a suggestion. Um, reply all is the worst. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I really like, um, even I, if I get an email, and I get these all the time, a client will email me, they want me to research, um, leave of absence for a small employer, um, and the woman's pregnant, and what can I do, and what are my options? It's not FMLA, what do we call it, how do we offer it? And I'm like, oh, it's going to take me like an hour to research and write a cohesive, well thought out professional response. I will copy that email, put it on my calendar, and say, hey, can I get to you Thursday? Is that acceptable for a sponsor? Do you need it sooner? So that way I can take that email and I can block the time, focus on that task, and write my calm, cohesive, well thought out responses on my calendar. Um, so you can use, um, you can, again, this is from Office 365, but under other reply actions, reply all by meeting, and I might just invite myself to the meeting, but it's on my calendar for me to respond to that task. It takes the whole text of the email and it dumps it in your calendar, so everything you need to focus on that is right there at your fingertips. Um, and if it's two or three people, again, in your work group or the, the email chatter, you can take all of that, put it in a quick 15 minute, 30 minute hour meeting, and just talk about it, come up with the solutions. Um, 
Copy the calendar again. We'll create an appointment, attach the email, um, and don't always think like reply. Maybe sometimes what you need to do is forward, right? If you have somebody you can forward it to, delegate it to, uh, see if they'll help you out and deal with it. Um, I'm also a big fan of uh, managing things like distribution lists, uh, listservs, CCs, etc. Do I have that on here? Yeah. Um, so, uh, how many of you get CC'd on something just because someone's trying to cover the behind? But they can say, I told you so, right? Take all those CCs and just dump them in a folder. Mail rules. Uh, that one says uh, the one I kind of have highlighted there. Oops, no, no that's not what I'm sorry. Um, in my, right about there. So if I'm on the CC line, oh, there's a little bit of shape. Put it, yeah, a little bit of shape. Um, put it in a separate folder. And I'm going to look at my inbox first. Things are actually to me. But if I'm only copying on it, I might just pop in there once a day, maybe every other day, right? Someone's probably just trying to, you know, I'm just copying on it. I don't have any action. And then if bad habits are popping up, if they're CCing me on something that's actually to me, I'm going to talk to that person and say, hey, if you actually need me to do something with it, put it in the two line or call me. And we'll talk it through. So you can use mail rules to put things like your distro list, your newsletters, all those things. Put them in a folder and look at them maybe once a week when you have time. And or you can make time. You can sort things, you can dump CC messages in their own folder, and then block time to go review them. So you're not hijacked. I can't tell you how many times I get hijacked by some newsletter thing. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> 40 minutes go by that I'm like lost in hyperlink land reading all the articles. Um, so, you know, manage your email model. So again, sketch, don't, don't keep your email open constantly. Schedule time to review it. Turn off those pop-ups that go ding, 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 ding. You look at the screen of my phone, there are no little red buttons. When one pops up, it's like, oh, I have a notification. Make it go away. Um, just turn those off. Um, think respond, reply, or delete when you get email. Um, try to keep it short and sweet. And try not to be the guilty reply all person who's replying all. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Um, some thoughts about email. Any, um, yeah, do not ever, under any circumstances, use reply all. Try to avoid it if you can. Um, all right, so again, take a minute and just what adjustments do you make that do you need to make regarding email, distro lists, copy to calendar, what improvement opportunities you have for email? Take a couple notes. Yeah, question. Just make a comment or question, I guess. <coughs> With Comments the 19 present here as well, the problem I think when we don't do reply all is that we may work for others because then they don't know that somebody else is already taking care of it. Yeah, that could so be. Three of us yes. respond to this yeah. client. Oh. Routinely. So yeah. I was curious of your thoughts of why you don't like that because I think in some cases it's yeah. creating the same task for everybody. Well, so sometimes, yeah, and sometimes what it might be is the client's emailing like four of you looking for response, one person reply all and say, got it, working on it, you know, something like that so that people know that it's in progress perhaps. And obviously I'm being facetious, like do not ever. There are probably are some cases where you have to do it, but um, where I've been in that boat, it's been somebody emailing four or five of us, uh, and rather than us simultaneously working on it at the same time, one person reply and say, I got it, I'm working on it. Um, and then others can kind of sit by and kind of wait for the response, maybe read it later, that sort of thing, if applicable. I know it won't work in every case, but good call. Thank you. Yeah? I can you still on why you say that not to reply all? In my experience, a lot of times with reply all, you just end up with too many cooks in the kitchen. A lot of people aren't the decider. They maybe aren't, and one person's going to work on it, but five people might think they have to work on it. it sometimes it can just be real inefficient. So, Especially if everyone just replies all, thank you, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or it turns into, I have a, a law firm client, and for some reason, like 10 attorneys got on some email about the temperature of the building, and they're all replying with different thoughts and opinions, and then they're replying to each other about what temperature the building should be, and who's going to call the HVAC person, and da, da, da. So it just can downward spiral to real inefficient. You're like, well, so what's the decision? <laughs> so take it offline. If that would be a case where I would take it offline and say, hey, let's just schedule a 30-minute meeting about this tomorrow. We'll hash it out. We'll figure it out. If you really feel strongly, come to the meeting and just get it out of email. So otherwise, you're just stuck reading 75 comments on comments. And, yeah. We've done both where somebody would say, I'm going to take this, or so I was on the phone with someone, so they're handling this, so yeah. whatever. Got it. And it's yeah. sometimes I'll reply all to let them, and then I'll yeah. do the directing on after that. Yeah. And we've actually done the opposite, too, um, just because of the nature of our work. We do have our, we need to have our email open. 
like, not that we can't ever shut it down and focus on yeah. it, but um, there's also been times where I've specifically said if there's five or six people on an email to work on a proposal, I just specifically said, please reply all. Yeah, especially sure. if I know somebody's like, kind of backing me up or um, the reverse of that, when I was new to this position, I wasn't the one doing things per se yeah. on that, but I asked to be kept on it just so sure. kind of a, a training opportunity yeah. that was more, yeah. I'm going to go through this way. Yeah, time, so. and some of those I might put in a folder in the desk. You don't need to look at those constantly. There probably are times, even if you do need to be vigilantly monitoring email, um, you know, if you need an hour to focus on something, yes. then shut it down. Yes. Focus. Yeah. You might need to check it seven times. Kind of I said two or three, you might need to check it seven times. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ours kind of does look like yeah. open most of the time, but when, if there's something we need to focus on, yeah. we could. Yeah, no problem. Okay, good stuff. Okay, so some opportunities. Obviously, don't take it right on saying totally, literally. Um, but you know, try to find those opportunities where you may be overusing uh, an approach that isn't bearing fruit. So, okay, a um, couple more things here around managing people, managing self, uh, interrupters. Hey, you got a minute? Right. The the boss in the office is like, hey, so I'm gonna kind of sort of need you to come in on Saturday. Um, those types of interruptions. Um, if I'm constantly getting you know, someone's constantly coming to me with the same question or information, I might suggest, hey, could, rather than us emailing back and forth, could we maybe just set up a 15 minute once a week kind of huddle? This same law firm client I mentioned earlier, their chief of staff and the managing partner estimated that they were probably exchanging about 100 emails a day to each other for things that like, I need approval, did you get my email? <laughs> did, you, did you get my email to your email? And to, to stop, challenge them to not email each other anymore ever, and instead set up a twice a day, 10 minute huddle. So now they have coffee in the morning, they have coffee after lunch or whatever, after lunch, and they knock out all those approvals and are saving themselves tons of email. So try to turn those into conversations. Your team, your direct reports, your staff meeting, instead of having a staff meeting via email, you be more efficient to have that in a one hour, 30 minute conversation. They'll, they'll then, they'll start putting those items on a list and bringing them to you rather than emailing them in the moment. So, hey, can you add that to our, the, your list for our next meeting? And they'll get trained that way and they'll stop, um, you know, interrupting or sending unnecessary emails for things that aren't urgent. Now again, if it's high importance, high urgency, I'd say, hey, call me. Or shoot, in that case, use the little exclamation point and I'll take a look at it. That's also good if you have people that you work with who aren't in the same office for you or with you, remote work. Uh, make sure you're spending regular face time with people and they'll be less likely to perhaps uh, interrupt you or email you. Yeah. Um, and again, when you do that, you, you can define boundaries. You can say, well, I can't do it today. It's Thursday. Okay. Uh, can I get back to you by 5 o'clock? With a better plan, you're better able to negotiate those, uh, those boundaries. So learn to say things like how, when, or even even know if you need to. Um, let your calendar be your alibi. If you have things already allocated, you can open up your calendar and say, well, this is what I have going on, boss. Which of these things should I push and to when? So let your calendar be your alibi and your negotiating partner when you put those things on your calendar. Uh, clarify importance and urgency of the request. Uh, ASAP, <laughs> to some of us, might literally mean like I need it now, but to other people, when they hear ASAP, you might think, well, I've looked at my calendar, and next week, Thursday is when I can get to it. It's better to just say, hey, if possible, I'd like this by 5 o'clock tomorrow. Is it feasible? So use detail to kind of help you negotiate there as well. And, you know, you might get told no. No, it really does. Like, they need to drop everything you do right now. But it doesn't hurt to ask. So try to find those opportunities to negotiate if you can. Um, I had a client the other day say that, um, we've been doing some coaching on, they just said yes to everything that came up, even though it wasn't always their job. And instead, they've been now trying to direct some of those requests to where they go. And she said, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm saying no to people. When they call, I say, well, have you tried calling IT? They call with their, their IT issues. She thought she would have to, so I was saying yes, I have to fix it. Instead, now she says, well, have you called IT? So she said, I'm telling people no. Said, That's not a no. <laughs> it's a helpful response. If I have an IT issue, I should call IT. That is what I should do. You're not telling me no, you're helping me solve that problem. But to some of us, that sounds like a no, and it's hard to, hard to use those words. So practice some of those things. Okay. Um, and again, uh, try not to overcommit. Uh, let your calendar be your alibi. And as I said earlier, spending time relaxing, your kids, your spouse, exercising, or even just doing nothing uh, is a well-deserved use of your time in many circumstances. Um, as managers as well, you have to also assume that people 
are, can do their jobs. Don't, don't get caught in that micromanaging and spending your time looking over their shoulder. Um, don't manage to that lowest common denominator maybe because you have one person who isn't holding their weight. Spend your time with that person if you need to. But um, regular performance check-ins uh, can help you with that. Um, and again, spending time with people in a proactive way will help you from fighting fires and things falling into that uh, high urgency bucket. So trust that people can do their jobs and verify by spending the right amount of time with them in a proactive way. Okay. Um, there's a really great article, uh, if you I already mentioned Covey, but if you want another thing to read, write down an article called Who's Got the Monkey? You're, I'm sure you're wondering why I brought this. Um, it's called Who's Got the Monkey? It's a Harvard Business Review classic article. It's from the 70s. It uses words like subordinate, which no one says anymore. Um, but it's got some really great uh, tips in it for managers about how, you know, as a manager, you have your job responsibilities, your monkey's on your back, and your employees have their job responsibilities and things that are theirs to manage and care and feed for, you know, this cute little guy. And so often our employees come to us and they say, hey boss, I've got a problem. <laughs> and we take that monkey for them and we take it home for the night and we care, it, care for it and we feed it and we raise it as if it's our own. And what we need to do when employees come to us and say, hey boss, I've got a problem, is say, that's great. What are you going to do about it? What's your plan? Have you thought about how to take care of that problem? What recommendations do you have for that problem? Can you research it and get back to me tomorrow? But instead, when that employee comes to us with that monkey, we say, oh gosh, that is a problem. Let me take it. I'll go. I'll look into it. I'll email you back. I'll get back to you. Let me think about it. And we take it home with us as managers. And now, He's supervising me because I just took his job responsibility and he's going, hey boss, did you get back to me on that? <laughs> you know, where's my response? You said you'd get back to me, right? Um, so we tend to do that. So watch out for those opportunities where you're buying back that monkey from your employee. Things like, let me think about it. I'll let you know. Leave it here. I'll take care of it, right? Um, I'll draft it. I'll finish it. Things like that. Big time stuff, and you're taking their job responsibilities away from them. You're robbing them of initiative, and something that really is their responsibility to manage. Like, gosh, that is a problem. What do you think you should do about it? Right? Things like that. Um, putting it in limbo, another big kind of time waster. Let's talk about it later. Well, when? <laughs> Scheduled meeting, put on your calendar. Um, let me know if I can help. How many, how many times do you hear this at work? You know, someday what we should do is, or uh, we really have to do something about this. Limbo, it's just limbo. If you want to do it, plan for it, put it on your calendar. Um, so instead, work on phrases that actually establish accountability. Um, I know you're qualified to take care of this. I'm counting on you. I gave this monkey to you because um, what's your plan to take care of it? And try to use those phrases that let them keep accountability on, on their own desk. Okay. So uh, again, the article is called, I'll see if I can send a link out to it. It's called, Who's Got the Monkey? I think in 1978, Harvard Business Review. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. No, uh, I was just going to make a comment. Uh, so we're implementing this uh, agile methodology mm -hmm. in my, with my team. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay. So, so start working with this agile methodology. I think this is a common thing that is yeah. happening with all the, the companies, even big companies that are moving that direction, mm -hmm. taking more of a startup um, approach to, to solve things mm -hmm. and to gain efficiency. And one of, one of the things is that uh, every three months we, just, we define what are the goals are for that. So it's basically the quarterly yeah. uh, uh -huh. planning. Yeah. So we know what we have to deliver, what, what are the big stones that we have to deliver in, in the first um, three months. Yeah. And then we divide the weeks in sprints yeah. and, and we work every two, two weeks. Yeah. We have a set of activities that we have to run through. Yeah. So every two weeks. So Every Monday, the first week, yeah. we plan what's going to be the work. And then yeah. the first time we did it with my team, we had so many tests. Yeah. And I was pretty sure that we were not going to be able to do yeah. it. But, but I let the team you know, just you know, lay out the, what are the tests were. Yeah. And then at the end of the, the second week, we get together and we have a perspective yeah. meeting that we talk about you know, what worked, what it, uh, didn't work, yeah. you know, how was the load. And then uh, that helped us to plan better. So yeah. we um, we started with you know, you know 30 activities in the first sprint, and then in the second one we adjusted, and now we were able to deliver at a constant pace, frequent, and um, it 
it's, it's much more organized. Yeah. Emails will cut up because we use a test form, yeah. like a Trello oh, or something <laughs> like this, and we communicate yeah. through, uh, through, through that platform. So we don't need to send an email yeah. uh, to, to communicate since uh, awesome. everyone has its own responsibility. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Yeah, that actual methodology you know, by design incorporates a lot of these same techniques. Um, yeah, you're forecasting, you're planning ahead, you're reviewing the work that was done, and you're communicating in kind of a, a morning huddle approach as opposed to uh, emailing. And somebody waiting at their desk for an email response because they threw their monkey in your inbox, and now it's your problem. Um, so yeah, good. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so again, if you have opportunities to renegotiate deadlines, things like that, if you're collecting too many monkeys from your staff, uh, how can you avoid buying some of them back? Okay, two more topics here and we'll get you out of here. Um, per ironically, running late, I'm a time management train. Um, <laughs> 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 Next time I'll have to build in the time for introductions. I have to um, all right, productivity apps. If you have apps that you like, I mean, again, calendar is probably my number one, but the, my number two, honestly, in my house would be a shared grocery list. Anybody in my house can add something to the grocery list, and when one person stops at the store, they get everything on the list. It's magic. Um, <laughs> so, you know, definitely use uh, apps that will help your productivity. If you're having a pain point, definitely go search productivity and find a good app that's going to work for you if you think that will help. Um, so, uh, I will not spend too much time on that. There's apps galore, and frankly, I cannot keep up with all of them. But if you, you know, I know uh, Monday.com, uh, COSI, the family kind of planning apps, there's all kinds of great tools out there. So if you feel like you have a pain point, you do some research, there probably is a solution for it. So just to kind of wrap up here, you cannot manage time, but you can manage yourself, your actions, how you prioritize, and how you allocate the time that you do have. You have to plan ahead in order to allow time for things that are important, essential, critical to your happiness, but might, might not be on fire today. Um, you know, pick, pick, I know I've given you a lot of tips and tricks and you're thinking, oh, I might have to overhaul my entire life. Um, <laughs> don't do that. Pick one thing off the menu to try. If you like it, pick another thing off the menu. Um, so things will fall out of balance. Again, um, organized professional uh, has her act together Kelly can show up with a nice organized calendar, but real busy Kelly sometimes goes back to post-it notes and to-do lists and things like that. So it'll slip and you got to bring it back into balance. Um, so reclaim some time on your calendar, get things swinging back in your favor uh, when that happens. So um, thank you all for your, your time uh, and attention to this topic. I hope it was helpful. And I will happily take questions uh, if you want to hang around for a bit. So thank you so much. Appreciate it.